So with the recent price action on SoFi, I'm sure you must be wondering, is it correct time to buy more or should I wait, especially given all the insider buying? Well, like yourself, even some of the pros and market makers cannot make up their mind, and that is why they play options. I'm not sure if you know this, but options are used not to just make money, but for retailers like you and me, yes, we make money on options, but 75% of the time, an option contract is executed to hedge a position. This could be bullish or bearish. So let's break it down and let's take an example of SoFi. So if you are bullish on SoFi and if you think that SoFi would be over $10 by say April 18th, 2022, then you have two options, buy the stock and pay $9 and change for the stock today. So that let's say you wanna buy 100 shares, then you would pay about $900 on change. Or you could go out and buy the right to buy shares of SoFi, let's say at $10 for April 18th, 2022, which is in the next few weeks. Now, if you are buying that call contract, then you would pay about 78 cents or about $78 for one contract that you are betting that SoFi is going to be $10 by April 18th. Now, in a way, you are saying that I would want to buy shares at $10 by April 18th. And let's say by April 18th, SoFi is $11. Now, the owner of the contract has the right to buy SoFi for $10, making $1 in profit right away. But by April 18th, if SoFi is trading at say $9, then the contract holder will let the call expire because it doesn't make sense for him to buy something that he can get in open market for cheaper. So now the person suffer complete loss because they have just let the contract expire. This whole transaction can be reversed if you were to sell a call on the shares you already own. So hedging can happen both ways. It can happen when the stock is going up, it can happen when the stock is going down. So this technique is used by a lot of institutional buyers, a lot of hedge funds to basically hedge against their positions. So here's a quick explanation on the investor sentiment on a stock depending on the market condition. Now let's see what SoFi did in the last few weeks. So I'm going to share this screen with you right here and it shows the top part is calls right here. This is calls and these are puts. And this is on the side is the volume and I've actually adjusted the graph. So it's the same volume, 0.4 million, 0.6 million, 0.8 million on both uh, call and put side. So if you pay attention and you can see that call volume has always been higher on SoFi as compared to put volume and we are going back May of 2021. And in the recent time, you can see the activity has actually increased a lot more for on call side and also on put side if you compare it with the rest of the year. So starting January, we see this huge spike in the number of contracts that's been traded. But pay attention to this. In the beginning, you saw a lot of red. Red is basically when you are selling a call contract and green is basically when you are buying a call contract. And if you pay attention, the same thing is true right here for puts. So when you are buying a call contract over here, you saw that around, this is January to February, in between that, a lot of sell call contract happened right at that time. When people are basically hedging on the shares that they own and they were basically selling or making some money here because they knew that the SoFi stock is in the downturn and it's not going to go up anytime soon. So they were hedging and they were making money on their positions. Even I did it. I sold some calls during when the market was really down because I knew that SoFi is not gonna go up anytime soon. So I had my 11,000 shares and I was selling like 110 covered calls on my shares at a premium that I know SoFi is not going to hit and I was making money even in the downturn term. Then we got some bullish sentiment when the stock went up a little bit and we saw a buying activity on both ends, buying of puts and buying of calls. So this over here, you can see that now in the last one day right here is green. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So you can see right here that in the last one day, we had a huge call activity that took place about 0.27 million calls or point, I would say 270,000 calls were executed in the last one day as compared to around 100,000 puts. So the difference between call and put was, was huge. People were more bullish on SoFi with the recent price action, especially with the market conditions. It's not just SoFi, the whole market condition. Now I'm going to show you a table that outlines all the calls and puts. So pay attention to this right here. I'm going to mark right over here. So you can see that 18th March was a huge date when we had huge volume of contract that expired. And you can see that nine and a half and ten dollar calls for 18th March, which was yesterday, was huge and massive volume. Then open interest was also massive. But after that, look at the open interest on 14th April, 12.5 dollar call 
call on SoFi. We have about 35,000 open interest and we have about 14,000 volume on this. Another popular one is 14th April, $10 call. See over here, 18,000 open interest, but look at the volume. Volume is about 17,700. Another popular one is 18th March, which of course expired, a $9 call that we had. We had about 18,000 open interest. So if you pay attention, we have some put activity over here. Put, look, put seven and a half, 17th June put, we have about 4,111 open interest, but look at the volume, 11,832. So I feel that what we are seeing here, if you pay attention, we have a lot less put as compared to the calls and calls are actually near money. I mean, nobody in the whole thing, you will not see a call which is, has like $18 or $20. The max amount that I see is $12.5 right here for 14th April. After that, all the calls are near money or at the money which tells you two things. Number one is that the recent rally that we see, people are not confident that it can sustain for the long term. Otherwise, they would be going $15 call or $18 call. They are basically betting and paying a little bit more because if I were to go an $18 call for June, I'm pretty sure I can get it for like pennies. It's like so cheap right now because where the whole stock market is. But they're not betting on that. They are going to be betting or they are betting at a much closer to the money price. And I feel that as SoFi and market improves, and when we see more action towards out of the money calls, for example, $15, $16, or maybe $18 calls, then we can say that, you know what, bulls are back. Right now, this rally is giving a chance to investors to make money in a very short term and not being very bullish. This activity is telling me that people are not being very bullish on the stock yet, because if they are doing on or close the money call, that means they are being very, very careful with their money, which is of course not a bad thing at all, especially given the market conditions. So if you are planning to, let's say, go in and buy 50, 50 calls, you are planning to go in and buy 50 calls, I wouldn't be get too excited about it right now. We have to wait what the market does in the coming week. Because we what we saw on Friday was triple witching and, we, and one of the users actually commented in our Discord, which was a very smart comment that, you know what, there is a lot of put that are expiring and market makers can give this as a fake rally. Now, we don't know if it's a fake rally or it's a, a non-fake rally. But what we know for sure, that a rally like this, we have seen it again and again in the last few months a rally for two, three days, and then the stock market comes down. Because Fed is now out of the question. We have at least one thing that we know for a fact, and market already knows that, has priced it. We are not worried about Fed now, right now. When the new CPI data comes out, we might get worried again, depending on if the Fed is gonna come out and raise the interest point to 50 basis point or 25 basis point. But right now, the biggest worry is Russia and Ukraine, and also the energy prices. Energy prices are not going to come down that soon, that quickly, in my opinion. What we saw was a little plunge, was nothing but a market sentiment, and now we see the energy prices going back up. So I don't think energy prices is going to come back down that quickly in the coming months. But Russia-Ukraine situation could improve given the latest call with Biden and, and Chinese president. So we might see some improvement in the Russia and Ukraine situation. And if that happens, and if the rally comes back into the market, then I would feel that rally has legs to run. Right now, I would say if you are interested in companies or if you have money on the sidelines to invest, I mean, I have some funds. I, I sold one of my big stock recently and I have some funds sitting on the sideline. I didn't do any make, I didn't make any purchase or didn't do anything with that money. I'm just waiting for the right market conditions. And I would be going in and buying stocks that are profitable, that has cash flow, and that has a huge, I would say 2022 to 2023 spectrum. For example, names I've given you in my past videos, I'm talking about Google, I'm talking about Microsoft, I'm talking about Tesla. Those are the companies I would be putting majority of my funds. And when I see the market sentiment has improved and the bulls are back and they have legs to run, then I would put my or I would put more money into the stock like SoFi, into the stock like Roku, into the stock like some of the other stock which I think has a great potential in the coming years. That is my game plan and that is how I'm playing. So no matter who you are, a bear, a bull, a lover or a hater, mention in the comments and let me know what you plan on doing in the coming months on SoFi stock. Are you holding, selling, hedging or adding more?
I have provided our Discord and Patreon link to make sure you join and chat with some like-minded individuals if you like stuff like this. And take advantage of four free stock and a guaranteed new stock by clicking on the Moomoo link in the description as well. I like the app and since last two weeks I've been using it constantly for my charting etc. It's a great tool, a handy tool and actually it's pretty good in terms of their desktop app is actually pretty impressive. Thank you for joining me and as a reminder I'm traveling this upcoming week but if I see something interesting I will definitely share in a short video. As always a pleasure to share this. Until next time, you all have a sparkling day.